Trojan Sports Now. Hello and welcome to Trojan Sports Now. I'm Amy Austin. And I'm Clay Ager. Stick around as we bring you the latest news and scores from Troy Athletics. The football team headed to Monroe, Louisiana to take on the ULM Warhawks to open conference play, but fell in the final minutes of the game. As they opened conference play, the Troy University football team came close to a win, but lost in the final minutes as ULM kicked a field goal to beat the Trojans 22-20. to Obviously, I don't have much to say, but, <laughs> you know, we lost again by two points. I, you know, I, I thought we played better. Two teams close to equal. Uh, you know, we, I thought we fought them pretty hard. Uh, and had a had a chance to win the game, couldn't quite get it done, uh, and um, you know it's back to sort of the drawing board as far as open week here. With a tough loss by such a close score, many of the players are down after playing such a close game. Not, I'm not feeling too good, but gotta live with what happened. Heartbroken. I mean, that was a game that we had our chances and we didn't execute, and when it came down to it. So that's basically what it boils down to. Um, it hurt, it hurt us a lot, but I mean, I can't get too down on my team because I, I feel like we really did put our all into that game, and I feel like a lot of us left it on the field. So, I mean, I left the game hurt a lot by the loss, but I, I was real proud to see that my teammates actually stepped up to the challenge this week. Quarterback Brandon Silvers feels that the team finally came together to compete the entire game, but there are still things that can be worked on. I think. We can uh, improve on, you know, we played together as a team this last win, probably the first time all year, and so we just need to regroup on that and uh, just keep on going. We know we can win. I mean, we're on five, but we know we can win. We have the players that we can win with, and uh, we just need to go execute. The football team has a bye week this weekend. The soccer team opened conference play against South Alabama, but was unable to keep their winning streak going. The Jaguars defeated the Trojans 2-1 on Friday. South Alabama scored two goals early to give them the lead, which was unable to answer both goals, but did score in the second half to cut the lead in half. The goal came from senior Georgia Wallace, marking her first goal of her career. Troy had 10 shots on goal, while South Alabama only had eight. Head coach Jason Hamilton said this could be good for his team later on. If you're going to lose a game, it's good to lose a game to someone who's going to end up at the top of the conference um, and, you know, a team that's a good team. That way it's, you know, not demoralizing at all. So um, we knew they were going to be a good game on the road, tough. Um, so that's a game that, you know, I'd be willing to give up now if it helps us down the road. And I think that uh, seeing the way we played and, and talking after the game, you know, it, it is something that built a little bit of confidence because we played very good and we created a lot of opportunities. And, you know, we even though we gave up two opportunities to them um, that they didn't really earn, we still could have came back and, and won that game. The soccer team's next game is Friday at home against the ULL Ragin' Cajuns. The Trojan volleyball team played a pair of matches over the weekend. The Trojans lost in five sets to Arkansas State on Friday and were unable to turn it around on Saturday, Saturday against Texas State. Khadijah Torbert has the results from Saturday's match. The Troy volleyball team fell to Texas State 3-2 Saturday in Trojan Arena. Even though head coach Sonny Kirkpatrick is disappointed with the weekend's loss, he's proud of the team's effort throughout each match. Now wait for the last four matches. Uh, we just have to find a way to get done in five. Texas State's outstanding. And uh, I was really proud of our effort, especially coming off the, the match last night. Uh, I didn't know how we were going to recover or how we were going to come out. Uh, focused or mentally wise, uh, but we answered the bell and we, we really pushed a, a good team. And, you know, we had some really bright spots today. Last night I was really disappointed. I'm disappointed that we lost, but I'm, I'm really pleased with the way we competed. And, and if we compete like that, we'll win matches. Kirk Patrick says he is always grateful for the fans to come out and support the games and to keep coming. The wins will be back in effect soon. You know, I appreciate all the fans for coming out. It was a great weekend. Uh, I'm glad they got to see us play some pretty good stuff. Uh, please keep coming out and, and yelling for us, and I promise you we'll get some wins here coming soon. Uh, we just have to figure out a way to, to score a couple more points. But thank you for all our fans. But the volleyball program did have good news coming out of this weekend. Junior Allie Dowdle has was named the Sunbelt Conference Defensive Player of the Week. Dowdle broke Troy's single match record on Friday with 42 digs, topping Courtney Cohen's 39 dig record. Then on Saturday, Dowdle had 26 digs against the Bobcats. She has 
Recorded at least 20 digs in all five Sunbelt matches Troy has competed in thus far, and she leads the Sunbelt with 6.04 digs per set in conference play. This is the first award of Dowdell's career, the second for the Trojans this season. The women's golf team finished first in the Chris Bannister Golf Classic with the final mark of 900 and cruised with a 16-shot lead at the Silver Lakes Golf Course. Three Trojans placed in the top 10 led by Fatima Fernandez Cano and runner-up Langley Vinoy. Cano came in first claiming medalist honors. Cano's two under in the second round was the only under par round among the entire field. This is the second title for Cano in her last four events. Vinoy finished in the second place since her victory in the ULM Fred Marks Invitational. Vinoy matched Cano with an even par round of 72. And head coach Bart Barn feels that his team performed well. Pleased, really pleased with the way they played. Um, uh, all three rounds, um, you know, shooting shooting the best rounds in each round at least are tied for the, for the best rounds each round. So, I mean, you know, if you win each day, and that's kind of what we talk about, you know, from a philosophy is win each day, win each round. If you do that, then you're going to come out on top. The team will have the week off competing at the JU Classic. The men's golf team completed the Jack Nicklaus Invitational where they finished third among 12 teams. While the team finished third, sophomore Luke Mosier finished individually tied for sixth. The Trojans shot a four over in the final round on Monday after having the lowest score in the second round. Troy moved up in the ranks throughout the tournament. Mosier finished two over for the tournament after he shot a one over 72 on Monday. The Trojans will have a week off before returning to the court, and head coach Matt Terry was glad his team improved throughout the tournament. Played very, very well the last two days. The guys really picked it up. Round two, shot one under par, low round of the afternoon, and we were the low team by seven the last 36 holes. But the first round really cost us shooting 302 and put us behind the eight ball majorly. And But the guys picked it up. They they did a great job in the afternoon, got adjusted to the course. Or, you know, everything that they were doing wrong, they did right in the afternoon and played very, very well. And I was really proud to see, you know, the comeback and the push to get us, you know, into a, a third place finish. The men have a break before competing at the Auto Trader Collegiate Classic. The men's tennis team finished in the St. Francis ITA Men's All-American Championship on Sunday. Junior Daniel Bustamante made it to the final round of the pre-qualifying draw but was unable to advance. Bustamante won two matches on Saturday and then defeated Wake Forest Anthony DeClore in his first round on Sunday. In order to move on, Bustamante needed to win in the second round, but he fell to North Carolina's Robert Kelly. Head coach Scott Kidd said that although he was pleased with his team, they still have a lot to work on. Looking back at the term, I think it was a great um, representation for the team. It was their first time to All-American. Uh, Daniel Plaza had an amazing event, won three straight matches, um, upsetting a guy from Wake Forest who was top, their team was top 16 in the country. So a lot of pauses coming back. But on the other hand, as a coach, you know, I'm always looking how we can improve as a team and individually. So... Uh, with everything, the match results and, and, and all that, I think that you know we still got a lot of work to do, but it's looking very promising. I'm very excited for the for the spring. The children will be playing in the C. L. Varner Memorial Invitational this weekend. For the women's tennis team, Anya Kosovic and Trang Hyun competed at the Riviera ITA Women's All-American Championships. The team fell in their opening doubles match to Florida's Peggy Porter and Josie Coleman. The first match, the Florida team won 6 to nothing, and the second match, they took by a score of 7 to 6. The two Troy juniors did not compete in the pre-qualifying draw due to their national rankings. The duo is 50th in the nation in doubles. Kosovic and Hune will play in a constellation draw. The Trojans will all take the court on October 10th as they travel to Tuscaloosa for the USTA ITA Southern Regional Championships. With the new facility, new field, and a new coaching staff, the softball program is in a complete revamping period. And earlier, Courtney Addison sat down with Beth Mullins, who's the only Troy softball's second head coach in school history. It's exciting. I, uh, when I got into coaching, obviously it was my goal to be a head coach. And excited seemed to be the main word used by the new head coach. Beth Mullins traveled all the way from Starkville to take the reins of the Trojan softball team, but she's never really been that far from Troy after all. Mullins played collegiate ball at UAB and also started her coaching career there. From there, she's worked all over the Southeast, but she says that she's back where she belongs. Um, I've truly wanted to be a head coach in Alabama. I'm from Alabama. I love the state of Alabama. I'm closer to home. I think the softball in Alabama since I have been coaching has grown tremendously. And even though she's a graduate of Troy's biggest in-state rival, the Fairhope native says she's enjoying being a part of the Trojan family. The people are what make 
Troy. All the other coaches have been extremely supportive, which I think when we kind of work together and support each other, you can't ask for much more. Troy softball is full of changes this season, but Mullins knows hard work is something that must remain consistent in order for the program to succeed. You know, we've got to keep working hard. I mean, eventually the honeymoon phase goes away and it becomes you just got to work hard. Mullen says she's ready to see where the season goes. You know, I don't think of it as my program, it's ours. And I think the girls are excited to kind of just, it's a new adventure, it's a new journey. And anytime things are new, it's always exciting. Courtney Addison, Troy, Trojan Sports Now. And we'll hear more from Coach Mullins in this week's Trojan Profile later on in the show. Still to come on Trojan Sports Now, we'll have a preview of the Trojan Soccer Team's first home game under the new lights. But first, I had the chance to sit down with softball head coach Beth Mullen. Stick around for more Trojan Sports Now.